This is John Cole with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and today we're going to talk about vacuum blenders and slow juicers. Which is better? Which is worse? Which one should you buy? Which one should you get first if you don't already have one? All that kind of stuff. We're going to go ahead and try to answer your questions regarding this today. Now, that being said, the first thing I want to say is that today I'm sharing with you guys my two favorite appliances in my kitchen. This is both the vacuum blender and the slow juicer that I use at this time in my life until I find something better. And these are the best that I've tested to date. We have the Kuvings uh, Quiet High Power Vacuum Blender SV500 over on this side. And over on this side we have the Omega VSJ843 Vertical Slow Juicer over on this side. And if you said, John, what's better, man? The Kuvings vacuum blender or the VSJ43, and it'd be like, ask if you had kids, like, and I asked you, what one of your kids is your favorite, right? It kind of depends. And, like, comparing the VSJ to the Kuvings is like comparing literally apples to oranges. You can't really compare them because they're not exactly the same thing, right? They're each a little bit different, and each of them have their own set of pros and cons. So, you know, if it was me, you should get both of these guys because these guys are the number one and number two up kitchen appliances that you guys could have and own in your life that could change your life. And why is this? Why are these kitchen appliances more important than a toaster oven or a deep fryer, right? Well, the reason for me is because these machines will maximize the amount of nutrients in the foods that you process in them. You know, the deep fire will actually <laughs> negate many of the antioxidants that you put into it and furthermore create additional toxins, uh, you know, once you are you put the food in there because it's at high temperature in oil, right? And so I want you guys to own appliances such as these guys that will maximize the phytochemicals and the phytonutrients in the fresh fruits and the fresh vegetables that are the most healing foods on the entire planet. And it's these two machines I like the most because they keep and retain the nutrients and also give an amazing flavor to the end result, the end product, right? I mean, many people don't understand that the big problem with standard blenders without the vacuum feature is that they oxidize the nutrition. People think, oh, regular blenders like the Vitamix, the Blendtec, they're so good because they break open the cell walls so they have all the nutrients in there so now I could get them. But what people fail to realize is that when you're creating a vortex that's basically your, your blades are spinning at 20,000 RPMs that's creating a vortex in there. It's like a tornado in Kansas that's basically breaking open the cell walls with a high speed blade, sharp blade, which is really good. But also, it's, it's introducing oxygen now to all those exposed antioxidants that are no longer inside a cell. To protect them. So this is really bad. It oxidizes the nutrients. And for example, in uh, a test they did in Japan where they tested uh, polyphenol content in blueberries, you know, there's 2.5 times more polyphenol content in the blueberries, uh, you know, processed in a vacuum blender than with a standard blender. And to me, that is definitely significant. You know, meanwhile, on a slow juicer, right, it runs at a slow speed. This one happens to run at 43 RPMs or revolutions per minute. That's infinitely slower than a blender. And the way this machine works is that it doesn't have multiple hits on the food. So if you think about it, how the blender works, it actually works because things are like in a liquid state. You have to have enough liquid for the blender to work. And it, the, the, the food in there is actually kind of circling around and keeps hitting the blade. So it's like if you're punching yourself, you punch yourself like a hundred times, you know, stop. That's like multiple hits and you got a big bruise, right? Meanwhile, on the VSJ, you put the produce in there, it grinds it up very slowly. So it's grinding it very slowly and then it stops and then the juice comes out. So now you're not continually hitting your body so you're not going to have all these bruises. And meanwhile, because it's not continually hitting the blades, there's not going to be the oxidative damage that occurs in a standard blender. That being said, the new vacuum blender is interesting because... You know, although there are multiple hits, it's being done in an oxygen-deprived environment because it's sucking out the extra air inside the chamber. 
So I'm really curious to see once they come out, you know, testing between vacuum blender antioxidant content and slow juicer antioxidant content. I don't know which one's going to be more or less. And, you know, I don't really care because they're both good in their own respects. This one keeps all the fiber. This one removes some of the fiber. The insoluble fiber is removed, but it keeps the soluble fiber in the juicers. And once again, each of these machines have their pros and cons. And depending on your specific situation, you may want to get one or the other. Or if you could afford them, I encourage you guys to get both. Because honestly, here's the thing. I use both these machines on a daily basis in my home. And here's when, right? For breakfast, generally I don't make smoothies. I don't, you know, for breakfast when I'm waking up and breakfast, it's called break your fast. You're breaking your fast. You're breaking your fast of sleeping, of not eating for the last hopefully 8 to 12 hours, right? So actually upon awakening, I usually drink coconut water or drink, you know, some good filtered water to get hydrated. Then I'll go about my day, I'll start working, and then a couple hours later when I get hungry, then I'll have a fresh vegetable to choose generally. And that way I'm removing the fiber, some of the fiber, I'm keeping the soluble fiber, removing the insoluble fiber. And now that's an easy way to transition from not eating to having water or coconut water to having a juice that is now easily absorbed into my body because my digestive system is clear of any foods because it's kind of all moved through in the hours that I've been sleeping and whatnot. So that's when I really like to use a juicer, right? Um, flip side, for dinner, right? Juices, they'd be too light for me. For dinner time, I like something a little bit more, like, meaty <laughs> or vegetable-y and a little bit more heavy, right? So for dinner, I might make a blended soup using the blender. I might make a blended salad using the blender. I might make a salad that I cut up and put a lot of greens from my garden in a bowl and then use the vacuum blender to make a dressing with maybe orange juice and macadamia nuts or maybe some tomatoes, uh, bell peppers, some uh, pickles, um, some nuts and seeds, some herbs and seasonings, some miso, and blend that up in the blender for a nice dressing, right? And I'm not oxidizing the tomatoes or other ingredients that I'm blending in there because it's done under vacuum. And so, each, honestly, each of these machines have their place. In the middle of the meal of the day, if you're wondering what I eat, I might eat some fresh fruit or something. Some days I might feel like making a smoothie or maybe I'll make a second juice. But it just depends. So, I mean, both these appliances have a really, have a purpose in your life. that You don't need to get one or the other. I believe everybody should actually own both. And if you can't afford, you know, these models, then, you know, get less expensive models. They may not perform as well as these. And these are the ones that do the best based on my testing at this time. And that's pretty much it. I mean, and I think I want to next go into some scenarios that you might want to think about, like if this scenario is your needs. Like, John, which one should I get if I can only get one? Because I know some of you guys might ask me that. And here's the thing. It depends on your situation, right? In my situation, I have both. But if I can only have one, if I had to choose one, I'd probably choose a slow juicer because I believe overall, you know, it's a little bit better in terms of me, my goals, my needs, and my current situation. And here's why. The juicer allows you to maximize the consumption of the fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. Standard Americans, most Americans, don't eat enough fruits and vegetables, and especially the leafy green vegetables. This is common knowledge, right? This is nothing out of the ordinary. You know, I personally don't have this problem. I eat plenty of fruits and vegetables. As a matter of fact, fruits and vegetables are the basis of my diet. <laughs> But nonetheless, if you're not eating enough fruits and vegetables, you definitely want to get a juicer because now you can take literally a pound of vegetables, you know, whether that's leafy greens, carrots, cauliflower, spinach, uh, bok choy, cabbage, whatever. You juice a pound of vegetables and now you got one cup of juice. This is especially important if you hate vegetables because now you can literally concentrate one pound of of the majority of the nutrients from the vegetables are now going to be in that juice that now you could ju you could drink, you know, simply and easily and get the nutrients out of them and remove all the fiber that we can't digest anyways, right? Yes, fiber is important in our diets, and I encourage you guys to eat a diet rich in fiber and meet all your fiber needs. I don't have any problems meeting my fiber needs on my specific diet where I eat. My diet is based out of plants, which they all contain fiber. But if your diet is based around meat and animal products, cheese, dairy, and eggs, right? These things have zero fiber. If your diet is based around hamburgers, hot dogs, fast food, processed food, you know, cookies, and bakery goods, right? These foods have 
zero or very little fiber depending on how the food was processed, right? And so then blending might be better for you in that case because you need to get some fiber, but if you eat plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables and you're just trying to top off the nutrient bank, then that's the thing about juicing. It really concentrates and allows you to get more of the best foods on the planet into you in an easy to digest form. And that's the other thing, like maybe, uh, you know, if say for example, if I had some kind of digestive issues, right? Some people cannot tolerate fiber at all. It'll make them have explosive events that they have to go to the bathroom for like immediately. And I've sold many juicers to people that can't tolerate fiber, so the juicer's definitely better for them. <laughs> the, the, the blender will actually put them into the hospital. You know, that being said, some people don't handle juice as well, and maybe the blender would be better, you know. Another situation for me is that I get produce for really cheap, whether it's because I'm going to the wholesale produce terminal in Los Angeles buying cases of organic zucchini for $4 or cases of organic pineapple for $8 or cases of organic grapefruit for $8 like I did on a recent trip there. Um, I have so much produce and I don't want it to go to waste. I want to get it into me and it's you know hard to sit there and eat four grapefruits in a row but I could easily take those four grapefruits, put it through the juicer, get rid of all that extra fiber and drink some delicious grapefruit juice to get those into me. Meanwhile, if I you know, put four grapefruits into the blender, I'd have basically grapefruit smoothie, which would be the same volume as eating four grapefruits. So I wouldn't be able to burn through all the produce that I got before it goes bad. Likewise, I'm also a gardener. I have a huge garden in my backyard with all kinds of leafy greens and vegetables. I grow things year round. So I always have an overabundance of fresh fruits and veg vegetables that I have from my garden that I want to get into me. They're not doing any benefit to, to me if they're sitting out on my garden and I haven't yet picked them or got them into me. So now I could pick a pound of my greens from my garden, especially good this time of year, and put them through the juicer and get one cup of juice and now I've burned through a pound of greens and nothing is wasted in my house. If it, if it goes out in the pulp bin, I don't end up eating it and some people like to process the pulp into crackers or veggie burgers or you know, put it in his soup stews or maybe even feed it to your dog with his dog food so he could get some extra fiber. Actually, that goes to uh, my compost bin. So now it breaks down, feeds my bacteria in my compost bin, which then that compost goes to grow my crops for the next season, right? And I get plenty of fiber in my diet otherwise in the salads I eat, the fresh fruit I eat, and the other plant foods that I eat in my diet. Say you're on the other end of the spectrum and you don't have a lot of money. John, every organic carrot or every organic bunch of greens I buy means a lot to me because I don't have a lot of money. Then you might want to go with the vacuum blender. So it's going to maximize the amount of antioxidants in there, maximize nutrition, and basically keep you on a one-to-one -one basis so you actually don't have to buy extra produce, especially if you guys can't afford it. Um, I would also encourage you guys to look into... Um, harvesting your own wild foods if they're available near you. Um, they can be free or inexpensive. Joining a community garden to start growing your own foods, to start growing your own sprouts or microgreens inside your kitchen. They're a lot more inexpensive. Another situation might be if you're trying to heal from some kind of disease, right? If I was trying to heal from a disease, would I get a vacuum blender or would I get a juicer? Straight up, I would get a juicer hands down. Why? Well, I've visited many different health retreats, you know, um, places around the country and when some of the incurables come in there with different kinds of uh, health conditions you know they don't feed them blended green smoothies I wish that actually most of them would start using the vacuum blenders now none of them are I mean the vacuum blending technology is so new and they may not even be aware of it yet I know a lot of you guys may not be aware of it until this video um, but they feed people fresh juices, fresh vegetable juices, right? Whether that's uh, green juices, wheatgrass juices, carrot apple juices like they uh, use on the Gerson therapy, which is actually a anti, has been used for anti-cancer and has had much success from what I hear. Um, they do juicing, they don't do smoothies because they know that after many years of trying this, they see what actually works, you know? So that's what I would, oh, and then the other thing is if I want to lose some weight, would I use a vacuum blender or a juicer. I would straight up, once again, I would be using a juicer if I want to lose weight, right? There's a popular uh, documentary film out there. It's on Netflix. I'll post a link down below if I remember. But it's a movie called Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. And the guy who is fat, sick, and nearly dead actually went on what's called a juice fast. And he's juiced and only drank juice for a specific period of time. And literally, he turned his health around, lost a lot of weight, and got a lot healthier. You know, 
He didn't actually do it on green smoothies. He did it on fresh juices because once again, you're concentrating the nutrients you know, that you're getting into. Also, the juices are a lot easier to digest because you are removing the fiber uh, you know, than the smoothies. So yeah, straight up, I'd be juicing uh, to lose weight instead of even vacuum blending. So of course, there's other reasons why you might want to get a vacuum blender instead of a slow juicer. You know, say you have no time in your day and it's, it's hard enough just to get you to eat healthy. Nonetheless, use a juicer because it takes more time to use a juicer than a blender and even clean it. So in that case, you might want to get a vacuum blender because doing a vacuum blender is definitely better than not doing anything at all. Um, and, you know, of course, cleaning a blender takes maybe 30 seconds. Cleaning this juicer takes me about three minutes, which still isn't that long. I mean, putting things and loading it into the vacuum blender doesn't take too long. You just fill up the craft, you're done, poof, and feeding everything through the juicer can take, you know, five, ten minutes, depending on how much you're juicing. I mean, today I was in the kitchen juicing for about an hour, actually. I made a lot of juice, and so it's going to take a long time. But, you know, in my opinion, if you want the most bang for your buck, uh, time-wise, I think the juicer is it, because literally it's concentrating the nutrients that then you can absorb in a much easier way and no matter what, if you whether you're drinking vacuum blended smoothies or juices, you should not just glug them down as fast as you can to get them into. You want to swish it around in your mouth and take some time before swallowing. So if you're one of the kind of people that want to make the, like the best long-term investment for your health, or just best investment, should you get a vacuum blender or a juicer? So me personally, once again, I'd go with a juicer. Number one. Uh, the Omega VSJ843 is less expensive than the Kuvings uh, Quiet High Power Vacuum Blender. Number two, uh, this unit has a 15 year warranty, which is an amazing warranty. I mean, literally, this is the last juicer you guys are going to have to buy. Uh, meanwhile, the Kuvings Vacuum Blender uh, has a seven year warranty, so that's about half the time. Not to say that it's going to fail, um, but this one has a lot longer warranty, so it's assured that you're going to have, you know, a better ROI or return on your investment. So as you guys have learned, each of these appliances should have a place in your kitchen and don't just get one or the other, but get both, right? Um, they're both beneficial and I use them both every day. Um, I think what I want to do next for you guys is actually do an actual demonstration so you guys can get to see visually like the differences between vacuum blending and slow juicing. So uh, actually, let me go ahead and uh, gets it up and will get even amounts of produce weighed out to process in both these machines that I'm actually going to do at the exact same time. So now I want to show you guys the process of either vacuum blending or slow juicing and how long it takes to do either one. So I prepared exact the same amounts of ingredients in both pitchers here and uh, we'll give you guys a close up. What we have here are we have on the bottom we have some celery we have uh, tree collards out of my garden, then we have some orange bell peppers and followed by some regular oranges on the top there. Um, we have, I've carefully measured it out, it's about 800 grams in each side, actually 803 grams in each container. So it's fair and square, even fight <laughs> to see how much yield each one makes. And I, I guess what I want to do for you guys, actually we're going to go ahead and time it for you guys. We'll move this one out of the way, I think I'll do the... A vacuum blender first. We're going to go ahead and put up the uh, stopwatch here so you guys can see how long it takes. And I guess I'm going to hit start and then we're going to get going. So we're going to hit start. And so now, basically, on the vacuum blender, we need to load this baby up. We're going to take off the, uh, the lid there, the noise reduction cover, and we're going to take this baby off. We got vacuum in the container here, so we got to suck that out. I'll pull that out and now we're just going to load it up. It's important, especially when blending any vacuum blender or any blender for that matter, is you always want to load your liquid, liquidy, most liquid items first. So in this case, it's the oranges. We're going to follow that by the bell peppers here. The other thing I want to let you guys know is that this is a blender. You need to add like enough liquids to get it to blend, whether that's through something like some filtered water, whether that's some coconut water, or whether it's liquids from fruits. So, you know, some of my favorite liquidy fruits are like, you could chop up pieces of cucumber, line that on the bottom. That's going to turn into some instant liquid quick style, right? You could use some um, oranges, right? Uh, most fruits are pretty liquidy, you know, thing to add. Um, you could also do something like tomatoes. Tomatoes are one of my favorite, you know, uh, vegetable liquids uh, to use. 
we are just packing in the rest of our greens and our celery here all the way up to the top. So one of the things I like about the Kuvings uh, Quiet Vacuum Blender is the craft. It's nice and small. Um, it does. It is a 64 ounce capacity total, but you can't fill it up to 64 ounce capacity all the way to the top because then it's going to basically overflow. So I think the maximum is maybe around 40 some odd ounces. And I've determined this is actually a really good thing because there's always times when my blender craft is bigger than my appetite and I fill up my blender craft and then I could always never really finish every last bit. So I'm glad to say that every time I use the Kuvings vacuum blender, I make it just makes me just enough so that I'm just nicely full and I actually didn't make too much that I have to save or do something else with. with. Alright, so uh, as you guys can see, we finished off all the produce in there. Maybe we'll move this baby out of the way. And uh, let's go ahead and make sure this is uh, pressed down enough down in there. And now we're going to go ahead and put our vacuum lid on. So unlike other vacuum blenders on the market that have a manual vacuum, the Kuvings is 100% automatic. So we're just going to go ahead and slide that on the back there. We're going to put our vacuum dome on. Then we're going to go ahead and press the button and turn it on. We're going to hit the A button right there in the middle. That's the vacuum um, and then blend button that's fully automated. So it's a one touch operation. You don't have to figure out how to use all these controls. Just press that button, starts the vacuum. There's a little gauge on the top here um, on the vacuum container. You can see it's blue and it's basically a line starts to go to let you know that there's a good solid vacuum and it's sucking vacuum out of the container. So you're hearing a little motor run and that's basically a vacuum motor. It's pulling all the extra oxygen, uh, all the space in between the fruits and the vegetables from the extra oxygen out so now the vacuum is going to take place in a oxygen deprived environment so now the oxidative damage that happens to most blenders will not happen in the Kuvings quiet high power vacuum blender and you're going to maximize some of the vitamin C, uh, vitamin A, uh, even things like the polyphenol antioxidants you're going to keep significantly more, you know, and it depends on the specific nutrient. I've seen, you know, in general, it's like two to three times more nutrients. All right, so now it's done blending or vacuuming. Now it's blending, and this has AI or artificial intelligence. It's basically going to pulse, blend at different speeds, and then uh, turn itself off when it figures it's all done. Hopefully, since I jam the greens in there, um, it's going to be able to uh, get those end up sucking down into the blender, but uh, we shall see. Alright, so it uh, totally turned itself off. I still see some chunks in there, so I'm not happy with that. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to hit the A button again. But this is the uh, auto blend without the vacuum feature since we still have a vacuum on the container. All right, now we're done. Now we're going to stop this. So it took about a total of uh, five minutes, 47 seconds. And uh, reset that. Put that over that side there. We're going to keep that in there under vacuum until I'm ready to open it up and drink it. <laughs> but next, we're going to go ahead and juice in the Omega BSJ843. And we're going to see how long it takes. Much like when you load the craft up in the vacuum blender, you want to load things properly and in a certain order. Uh, you also want to juice things in a certain order. So generally I like to you know, start off with something uh, soft and then go on to some leafy greens and then keep rotating through the different ingredients, not just juicing like all the oranges and then all the bell peppers and all this kind of stuff. You want to do a little bit of each ingredient. So I'm going to have to kind of like dig in here and dig out each ingredient uh, to get it juiced. But anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Hit start there. And let's go ahead and turn this juicer on and uh, let's start juicing. Alright, so I think we're about done juicing. Uh, we're pretty much out of produce here. We got the last orange going right in and getting juiced on up. Nice uh, juice coming out. Let's take a look. Our pulp uh, catch bin's working. The pulp flow is still flowing out of the machine. Now, once you put the last produce item into any vertical slow juicer, you do want to give it another 30 seconds minimum 
uh, to run to get any final uh, juices out. All right, and when pop, pulp stops flowing out the outlet port, I think you're pretty much all done. We'll turn that off. We'll hit stop. All right, look at that, man. Actually took me three minutes and 20 seconds uh, to juice. I think it took a little bit more time in the, in the blender, actually. Um, but yeah, this is considering I pre-prepped the produce, so both produce was prepped already previously. I just either had to load this up in the blender or actually run it through the juicer. And I did run two cycles in the blender, but even if I ran one cycle, I'm pretty confident that it would have took um, as much time. Um, or, or uh, you know, more time. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and compare the differences here. Let's go ahead and take off our uh, noise reduction cover here. And let's take off our smoothie. Now this is a little bit warm. I did run it two times. Uh, and we got a, uh, the same exact measuring cup over on this side here. And let's go ahead and uh, pull the suction out of the vacuum blender so you'll hear this. The sound of freshness because the oxygen was removed during blending. We kept the most amount of antioxidants in there. Uh, aside from just keeping the antioxidants, what will happen you'll find is you're going to have a uh, in general, a better texture. Also, no dissolved air in the juice. Very important. Also, because of the, it's going to have a more vibrant color than if you uh, didn't vacuum blend it, it's going to have more uh, phytochemicals and phytonutrients, or specifically antioxidants, in the blended mixture. Also, it's going to taste better, right? When you're blending, you're oxidizing, you're adding air bubbles. When you're oxidizing nutrients, that makes the flavor go down. When you're adding air bubbles, it's kind of diluting, you know, your mixture. So when you pour one of these uh, vacuum blended smoothies, you know, you have a nice, uh, you know, nicer texture here than a standard uh, blender. Got a lot of splashing here. Let's go ahead and try to get uh, every last bit out. All right, we got a lot out. So uh, as you guys can see, you know, basically what we put in the blender is what we got out. And uh, after measuring it on up, and actually it was about 800 uh, grams when I put it in. And uh, if we just do a comparison here, after we juiced, uh, and this is how much pulp we got. Uh, looks like to me that we got about uh, uh, almost 600 milliliters of juice on this side, and we got almost 800 milliliters of smoothie over on this side. So literally... If we just look at this, we're literally missing about 200 milliliters, and that, that's basically the pulp. So this allows you to maximize the nutrients, not to mention the flavor or the taste difference. So now we're going to go ahead and taste the difference. I think I'm going to go ahead and try the, uh, the juice first here. Mm. That's a good juice. It's quite agreeable. I do taste the sweetness of the oranges, but it's really tempered by the celery and the collard greens and the pepper. Uh, very little pulp actually in the fresh made juice. Now we're going to go ahead and try the smoothie here. And this is a, once again full fiber. Mmm. It's definitely a lot different, you know, like. For me personally, like it's much more enjoyable for me to drink this as a juice with 200, you know, milliliter less of yield um, and removing all the fiber. You know, if you wanted some extra fiber, I would grind up some flax seeds, for example, and add that into the juice and just stir it in with a with a knife or something or a spoon, and then drink it. You still have the amazing texture, um, but this is just a little bit more difficult to go down because all the the strands of the collard greens, the strands of the celery. Mm. To me, food is about pleasure and enjoyment. Maybe some people would more enjoy like the fiber. For me, <laughs> I personally much more rather drink uh, the juice version of this exact recipe. So what did you guys learn today, right? Well, you learned that vacuum blending and slow juicing are the best ways to maximize the amount of antioxidants, anti-aging compounds, anti-disease compounds in your life. And frankly, you should get both of these. That being said, each one of these machines have their place depending on the specific tasks you want to do. For example, this juicer over here. This juicer could make juices. 
This juicer could actually also make frozen fruit sorbets. It could also make nut butters. It could also make actually nut milks. Actually, this is my favorite juicer to make nut milks. Actually, to make the nut milks, actually, I do use a vacuum blender and the juicer to make nut milks, not just the juicer. But basically, the blender blends up the nuts in the water, and then I pour that mixture through the juicer to basically extract the juice and get rid of that fiber, that pulp on the other side. Um, making sorbets in this machine, you can put frozen bananas in here, and you'll have a frozen banana sorbet. I do have a video on that. I'll put it, a link down below. This one, you could also do the frozen fruit sorbets in, but it's going to be a different texture, right? Once, once again, like we have a juice texture, we have the, the smoothie texture. When you put frozen bananas in here and you just run it, number one, you have to have enough liquids in this machine or else it will not blend. Everything will just sit on top of the blender blades and not really get ground up. So it's more like a smoothie versus like an ice cream because you do have to add some liquid in the vacuum blender to get it to blend properly. I would prefer the texture of the juicer to have like more of a frozen yogurt consistency texture, you know, than more of a smoothie texture uh, in this unit. That being said, for nut butters, you know, uh, hands down, the Kuvings vacuum blender is a better device for making nut butters than the juicer is. Um, that being said, there's crossover where they will both do both. So, I mean, get both if you can afford it. That being said, I don't make my evening salad dressings or blended soups in the juicer. <laughs> I use the blender to blend those guys up, although I may make juice in the juicer to act as my primary ingredient in my blended soup so I could... For example, juice a bunch of bell peppers. I'll take the bell pepper juice, put that in the vacuum blender with some nuts, some seeds, some herbs and spices, some miso, some crushed sauerkraut, mushroom powder, and then blend that up into a nice, rich, delicious soup base that then I'll chop lots of vegetables up and put it into and, you know, eat that for dinner. So, I mean, in the end, each one of these has their place. Find out which one you will actually use more and get that one first, honestly. Um, you know, I want you guys to get these appliances in your home and more importantly, start to use them each and every day to get the most important foods that exist on the entire planet, the fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, other leafy greens and herbs into you guys so you guys can derive the health benefits. The problem with America today is that we are lacking in these foods. These are the machines you need to process these foods in the best way to maximize your health. Your health is worth it, guys. I mean, these machines are expensive, but they have nice long warranties, so you're assured you're going to have a health appliance that will change your life. The only reason why I sell juicers today is because I know how much juicing has helped my life. It saved my life. It turned my health around. It was my first step into making other dietary changes so that I could be healthier than I ever have been in my life. And I want this for you guys as well. That's why I make all these episodes, all these videos on this YouTube channel to basically tell you guys the truth about all these appliances because, you know, nobody else is going to do that. And so you guys can make an informed decision as an empowered consumer with the knowledge you need. Hopefully, if you have found this video and my other videos to be of service or help to you, I would encourage you guys to support me in my work by making your purchase at DiscountJuicers.com. I'll put links down below in the description also in the comment section to both these items, I do have a special promotional coupon code you guys can use um, on either of these machines. You want to use a coupon code SAVE30, S-A-V-E-3-0, uh, for $30 off either the Kuvings Vacuum Blender or the Omega VSJ843 to help you guys a little bit out on the price. Um, also, when you purchase from DiscountJuicers.com, that lets me know that you appreciate me and my videos and that you want me to continue to do them. So if you don't purchase from me and people don't purchase from me and support me and my work by making your purchase at DiscountJuicers.com, I might no longer be able to make these videos, which would be sad because I really love sharing this information and there's no other store or company that I know of that makes this information, that makes it available for you guys so you guys can make informed decisions as an empowered consumer. Um, also, please be aware that we do have a price match policy, so should you find a lower price by any authorized retailer on any of the products we offer, I'm glad to match that price, the out-the-door delivered price that the other company would charge you so that I could gain your business, not only on the price, which I know is important to some of you guys, but also, more importantly, on the service that I provide before the sale, like uh, in forms of videos, also after the sale, should you have any issues or challenges using the equipment, I'm here to help you because I this is the equipment I use in my daily home and so I know the ins and outs, the pros and cons, I know when it could mess up, what could happen if it messed up and how to rectify that situation. 
Furthermore, something you're going to get from me that you're not going to get if you purchase these appliances anywhere else is you're going to have me on your side as your liaison to ensure that you get warranty service from the manufacturer that you guys are buying from. No matter the brand, if we sell it at Discount Juicers, you know, I have direct connections with the companies, especially with Kuvings and Omega. You know, I know the VPs at both those companies. I can make one phone call and I say, hey, you know, so and so, my customer's not getting taken care of on a warranty situation. We need to make sure this gets ha handled ASAP. And guess what? It gets handled, right? If you buy it from another big box store and you're having warranty issues, you can call the big box store <laughs> and they're not going to like get on the phone with the company to make sure you're taken care of. They don't give a rat's you know, butt <laughs> about you. They just want your money so they can continue their global domination. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, um, you know, I'm here to help you guys out, to support you because I truly want you guys to be able to get more fruits and vegetables in you. Whether you want to grow them yourself, hey, that's great. I'll teach you guys how to do that also. You know, whether you want to learn why they're good for you, I'll teach you guys why they're good for you as well on my other YouTube channels. And your purchase goes so that I can continue my life's work and fulfill my life's mission of helping others on the planet because my life is only saved because of the juicer and major dietary changes because I almost lost my life when I was younger. So, I mean... I, I guess that's pretty much the end of this episode. I mean, I, hopefully I covered a lot of the different pros and cons of the blender versus the juicer. I, I got about 30 seconds of cleaning now on the, the, the Kuvings vacuum blender, and I got maybe about three minutes of cleaning on the VSJ43. Both of those are not a hassle to me. They're actually, it's fun and enjoyable. I really like how clean and well-designed the VSJ is. It's, it's the easiest to clean vertical single auger juicer that I've found to date. It works really well. I mean, it's the one I use. <laughs> So, and to me, like the investment of time that you take to make your smoothie, to repair your produce, or even for me, to grow my own food in my garden, you know, it's like, the, the, it's, it's the most important investment that I can make in my life, right? Because you are what you eat. Most people don't pay attention to what they eat. Most people don't want to take the time to do the best stuff, to make the juice, to use the vacuum liner, to get these foods into them so that their bodies could have the highest probability of healing from a disease if, you know you have one or to lose weight to shed the pounds right and that's what it is you just need to take the time these appliances don't take a lot of time and you guys could do it so I guess without further ado that's pretty much it for this episode if you have any questions comments concerns um, please post them in the comments down below I try to answer them as much as I am able also, be sure to support me in my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. Links are down below, once again, to both these products. Also, be sure to share this video with somebody else that's considering a uh, you know, vacuum blender or a juicer, maybe a significant um, other that you're going in on the purchase with so they can kind of learn the pros and cons and see which ones they might like because each person has their own preferences on what they might like more or might like less. And just because I like a juicer doesn't mean you have to sh should get a juicer first. Maybe you'll get a vacuum blender because it's easier to clean. I don't really know. But I just try to let you guys know all the options. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any of my new and upcoming episodes. I've come out every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what new appliance I'll be testing or comparing uh, to enhance your guys' lives. Also, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. I have specific videos on the VSJ843, how to use the VSJ843, unboxing the VSJ843, as well as unboxing the Kuvings Vacuum Blender, how to use it, and some of the other features about it if you want to learn about that as well. Um, I'll put links down below to some of the videos I've made about these products as well. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors.